I know he had this tremendous power, tremendous uh, as a presence. I remember seeing him in uh, Steptoe's Son, where he played an escaped prisoner again, very strong. And to come onto that show and almost overpower uh, Wilfred Bramble and Harry Corbett, it, it shows how strong he was. Lummy, you better have the packet here. <laughs> I've got some more. <clears throat> I did the machine on the way out. <laughs> and I thought, well, my gosh, you know, I don't know about the comedy, but he's such a powerful figure that he'd be a wonderful Rigsby. <laughs> and I know we weren't the only people after him at the time. So everybody knew that he had a situation comedy in him if he wanted to play it. Thank God he wanted to play ours. <laughs> he was a wonderful teacher for me because it was my first job and Land would take me aside and say, if you do it like this, it's funny. If you do it the way you're doing it, it's not. And he was uh, right on every occasion. You know, you couldn't help but, but, but be dumbfounded by his um, technical virtuosity. You had to watch the whole of him to get the full flavour of Len's acting style. I remember him, he was telling... Uh, Alan, when he was going to meet a middle-class lady, how to enter a room in polite society. And his whole... I mean, he did the whole thing beautifully choreographed. Uh, it was the same every time. And, and at the dress, it was superb. And I remember saying to Len, Len, that was fantastic. And he just looked at me and grinned and said, I've been doing it a long time, Eric. The enter room you're in. They close the door, you wait for the conversation to die down, you shoot your cuffs like that, and then you adjust them, leave it, just visible the diamond cufflinks when you're bidden to sit, shall I sit, you sit, you come over, his fingers on the trousers, up, down, to avoid any stiffness, just a casual throw of the leg over, the with nonchalant ease, and then you run, huh? Well, that's it, right, that's it. He absolutely loved Richard Beckinsale. He really loved him. I think everybody did. Um, but he, he really loved him. And they got on tremendously well together. Richard was very laid back. And he absorbed a lot of Len's frenetic energy, which was good for the show, because we couldn't have had two people like Len in the show. Where is he? Where is he? Where do you think you are, Len? What's the matter, Rigsby? What's the matter? You say that after nearly poisoning me. You're exaggerating. I was drunk to the eyeballs. I slept for 24 hours. I still can't feel my teeth. When you were filming with Francis and, and Leonard, they, they would rehearse together okay, you'd shoot the scene, and then when you finished shooting, and we're all happy with it, they would just go respectively, almost like boxers, to their own corners. Because, uh, you know, personally, they had, I don't think they had anything in common. Politically, they certainly had nothing in common. She was very left-wing, and I think Leonard, very Tory, very conservative. Leonard only got irritated with people who he felt were not pulling their full weight, and he, I don't think he ever felt that with Francis. I'm afraid there's something of the Philistine about you, Mr. Rigsby. It's very nice of you, Mr. Jones. <laughs> Len met somebody who was comically as adroit as he was. Mr. Rigsby, you're talking wildly. Stop looking at me like that. I quote, Miss Jones. So, so passionately. Well, it's how I feel, Miss Jones. Well, you shouldn't. I must say, you can be very plausible sometimes, very persuasive, Mr. Rigsby. <laughs> I don't know if it's the light, but you look strangely fascinating this evening. Although uh, the setting was absurd, it was rooted in a truth of a lonely man looking for love that gave it something more than just comedy. There was a pathos there, too. Yes, yes. You, uh, you may not know this, Miss Jones, but I happen to be uh, a bit of an expert on Indian food. Really, Mr. Yes, Rigsby? yes, oh yes, the tandoori chicken, the Bombay duck, yes. I particularly like the vindaloo, yes. Mind you, afterwards, it's usually a case of where's the loo? <laughs> <laughs> if, you'll, if you'll pardon my vernacular, Mr. Jones. Now then, mm. oh, now then, what's this little delicacy here? Oh, ah. well, that's the hot flannel. Oh, yes. <laughs> I knew that something was happening with the show because 
On the Friday nights we had the dress, and the dress would normally take place in front of, say, a dozen people. And then strangely, as the series went on, people came out of the offices at Yorkshire, and suddenly you've got about 100 people watching the dress rehearsals. So I realised that Len and Richard and Francis and Don had got something that was working very, very well. People always accuse us in situation comedy of using canned laughter. We had to suppress the laughter on that show, you know, to keep it within reasonable bounds. He worked very hard, so consequently everybody else worked very hard. The effort that he put into those shows was, was, was phenomenal. At the end of it, sometimes, the man was absolutely exhausted. It, it, it was the passion. That, that was there was, was, was frightening. He would be so wound up. I mean, it was like a sort of spring that just went on and on and on and on and on and on. And you thought, what's going to happen? You felt the top of his head was going to blow off. But it was, I mean, it was fantastic. That was the way he was. And we were like people holding him to the ground. <laughs> 